talk about offering praise today. Maya Angelou wrote, when we give cheerfully and accept gratefully, everyone is blessed. When we give cheerfully and accept gratefully, everyone is blessed. Well, this is how it is in Buddhism too. It doesn't matter what side of the coin you're on. Both sides are good. Both sides are useful or beneficial. I have a side of the equation wins, whether I'm on the giving side or the receiving side. Both of those sides feed my heart. If there is genuineness there, if, there, if it's genuinely true, and if I am offering something that is true to somebody else, reflecting back to them what I see of them, it feels good. It feels good to them. It feels good to me. It was like the other day when I told you about having given Bill that shirt and seeing his joy at the shirt, it brought just more joy to me. And we both could then receive the benefit of that. It's that simple. Giving and receiving is more like an electrical current. The giving and the receiving are like two neurons, you could say, where the signals are being passed, transmitted from one to the other. And once, it's, once that signal is passed, there's a, there's a reaction to that signal, like, oh, it's landed. Giving and receiving is like, like two people doing a relay race when, when the baton is being passed. It's not just the making of the contact with the baton makes contact with the hand. The hand has to grasp it. And once that hand has grasped it, it's landed. And when it's landed, that signal is transmitted. It's received. Giving requires a receiver. It's an exchange here to here, here to here. That's a flow, a cycle of giving, where the giving is the outflow and the receiving is the inflow. In the Buddhist practice of the Brahma Viharas, we're developing four heart qualities friendliness compassion, joy, and equanimity. And we develop them through the flow of giving and receiving. Well, there's a beautiful practice in the Tibetan traditions of Buddhism. And it's a practice where they use scarves, katas, K-H-A-T-A. I first encountered them when I, Bill and I began practicing for a period of time with Mingir Rinpoche. We took Bodhisattva vows with Mingir Rinpoche. And for this particular retreat, we, we had to go up and we offered a kata to him. And what really struck me was that at the end of the retreat, we all came up single file and he put a kata around our neck as we left. And it really struck me like, what did that mean symbolically? Well, katas, they represent purity, honesty, sincerity, and respect for others. They're presented at funerals and weddings. And when giving or receiving, when, re when somebody is, is being welcomed in or when somebody is leaving, departing, a kata might be offered. When we're visiting elders or we go to temples and visit shrines, katas are exchanged. And the meaning behind the kata will vary depending upon the context in which it is given. So during festivals, a kata might be an expression of, of celebration, of congratulations, of happiness. And during a wedding, the same thing. Or it actually might be this symbolic wish of that the couple may grow old together, old and well together. When it's presented to guests, to guests, it's often like a symbol of a gesture of blessing or of protection. And in funerals, it suggests grieving for the dead and comforting for the families who are the families of the deceased. So they have many meanings. And I, I love this, that it's used like this one symbol of a, of a scarf being exchanged is used for so many expressions of emotion and to express the sacredness of this being alive. <laughs> that actually our existence is praiseworthy. Out of respect that that kata is offered to an elder just for their existence. 
out of respect, out of out of um, we we offer appreciation and uh, praise for one's ability because one's abilities are a boon. They're not a given. They're not a given. It's a boon. Anything that we can do is a boon. And our hearts, the ability for our hearts to express and receive, this is really good food. And our hearts need that in order to grow. But different cultures have different, you know, different practices. And culturally, we are not taught how to offer praise for the sake of growing our hearts. Mostly praise is offered of, out of motivation so that we can use it to motivate someone. It's used uh, as an expression of courtesy. It's a platitude. And yes, it's, it is a sign of appreciation whose authenticity may or may not be consummate with the giving. We know that, right? How many times have we given a gift out of obligation <laughs> as opposed to really feeling the sentiment of it, right? That, that's, it's like that. Praise is a gift. So we stand to learn how to offer and receive praise because it's for our benefit. Our hearts grow in that presence. How do we stand or take our seat? How do we feel within our bodies in the present moment and open to receiving or offering words of recognition into our hearts, not just our head? We see, last, uh, the other day, last week, I talked about receiving praise and how that's very tricky. Well, offering is also a practice and it requires some attention. So pause for a moment with me and just reflect. When was the last time you offered a compliment? Do you remember? Was it true? Do you remember the compliment you offered? Was it true? How did it feel when you gave it, when you said it to the person? How was it received? How did that reception feel, right? How often do we consider that, consider these kinds of, of questions? And how often do you offer compliments in general? Are you stingy with them or do you give them rather liberally, right? No judgment, but just be curious, notice that, notice that. You know, what, that's one of the things that Bill and I really try to practice a lot is actually offering compliments. Very simple words of appreciation. Somebody gives us a coffee at a, at, a, at a coffee shop and we say thank you. And we really mean it. Right? So consider the next time you give a compliment or you're about to check in, is it true? Do you really mean it? Is there a motive behind saying it? Then ground, breathe, and offer. See how it lands in you and in the other person. That's information. Use that information. You know, you, we might consider, you know, how we give praise to a child or how we might do that. When we might do that. Right? Right? This, this weekend, I happened to be with a, a, few, a few of our dear little ones. And, you know, when praise would come out of the mouth, it was often around like natural abilities. Like our, our Buddha daughter was here and she was a, she's very adept at math and, and she was uh, helping out a friend. And I, I really acknowledged her for her ability to do the math and then also her offering to help this other friend who actually isn't so good at math. So praising someone for their natural abilities, that's, that's worthy, that's worthy of a praise. Praising somebody for the effort that it takes to do something. I had some, someone helping us out, um, uh, uh, doing some yard work, lifting that I can no longer do. I am so deeply grateful for all of the heavy lifting that these folks can do that I cannot do any longer. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that, right? Or thank you just for showing up, for lending an ear, for being present when I, when I wanted to talk about X, Y, or Z. Thank you for that. And we might just you know, practice giving praise in our daily life, like, our, like I was saying with Bill and I, when we go out into the world, 
you know, we make these little, we turn transactions into interactions. That's what we like to say. So we'll go to the grocery store and we will honestly look for something that's praiseworthy that we can authentically give to someone, offer and point it out. Like exactly, the cashier. The cashier the other day, we were so, so she was lovely. She was absolutely lovely. And she also had these incredible nails that she clearly had just done. And they were all done up and she was being very careful with them. But she was still going fast, checking us out. And we thanked her for, for how, the speed with which she checked us out, but also for the beauty of her nails. Like, oh my goodness, aren't they just beautiful? And she so appreciated that. And she was delighted. You could see beaming with smiles. And to see her beam like that was a joy for us. Easy like that. This is food for our hearts too. Right? Saying thank you, just anonymously giving these little words of appreciation and gratitude. So easy for us, but deep appreciation. This is what hones our skills of observation, of kindness and care. This is growing our hearts. This is the work of, of the practice actually. So why offer praise? Really? Well, just think about what it's like when you receive it, when you honestly receive a compliment from somebody and they really mean it. How does it feel? This is why we give praise. This is why we offer in kind, because it communicates kindness and care, appreciation and respect. So let's, let's practice that. Let's practice this. This is the way of things. And just like we do with receiving, Find your ground, take a breath, feel the body as it's in the present moment in whatever posture it's in. Ground, breathe, and then offer. Offer the words. Let them land. Let the words register that you have just offered. Let them land in you and in the other person. And then breathe and receive. 